are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. That way I'm all crisp in your ears. Hey. Hey. Oh, wow. Ooh. That is crisp. Crisp. That is nice. What's up, brother? Hey, not much. Thank How you for you? good. I'm great. How are you? It's good to see you. I know. It's so good to see you. It's been so long. Well, not really. I saw you guys last year in San Antonio. It was the last time I seen you, I think. Right? Chaos. Sounds... Chaos and oh, Carnage. Yeah, yeah. Chaos yeah. and Carnage. That, that was, was a fun. fun tour. It was, was a lot a, of fun. It was great. Yeah. So you guys are here. You're playing tonight. Yeah. So we are at Come and Take It Live nice. tonight. Yeah. This will go out next week, so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you missed the boat if you. <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry, guys. No if you're watching promo. and if, if you're from Austin, you already missed the show. Yeah. But. Uh, Whoops. I don't know. Where... You'll be back. You guys always, oh, you guys yeah, always come always back come to back. Austin. Yeah, we love Austin. It's yeah. awesome. I remember um, playing at Emo's a lot. Uh -huh. Do you remember Emo's? It was like several different venues, if I remember correctly. They kept changing it. We're like, oh, I mean, Emo's again, but it's a different building. Um, but yeah, South by uh, Southwest. South by well. is so different now. Well, uh, and well, I say that as somebody who's I. Uh, this is what I've. Heard. I'm regurgitating stuff that other people have told me who have lived here longer. But like South by used to be like. All, all kinds of I don't know. You could tell me what South by used to be like, and I could tell you what it's like now. Okay. What did it used? To, what did South by used to be like? So you? we first started playing South by probably I don't know, I want to say our first was maybe like 2008 ish, um, pretty long time ago, and it was just a big party in the streets. Honestly, a lot of fun. There were just lots of amazing bands. It was pretty metal focused. From maybe it was just my surroundings and things that I was noticing, but. I remember Dillinger Escape Plan playing and, you know, just being really... The OGs. Yeah, yeah. like the OGs of, of the scene uh, playing South By. And uh, it was just good, wholesome fun, to be honest. It was great. It was kind of my first impressions of Austin. And it stuck with me so much that I still think of Austin as that culture of just having fun and music and a very heavy metal city driven just... Yeah. Party in the, the metal streets. scene here is awesome. Yeah, it kind of restored my faith in in the in like metal, like in like in the metal showgoer people that like listen to metal a little oh, bit. Like 100%. just because the metal scene from where I'm from, it's it's such a niche there from Portland. You know what I mean? Portland, it's it's not a bad place for for music, but it's not the it's just not it's not the it's a rough spot. To, to get to it's, it's a it's a rough spot now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. No yeah. offense to sorry, my viewers in Portland. I'm sure you're. Your your piece of Portland is great, but <laughs> after the pandemic, I don't know what happened to that city. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it was ruined. That's why I had to get out. But yeah, that's why that's what gravitated me here is like my first experience here really was well my second experience. I can talk about my first experience in uh, in a minute. But the my second experience here most recently was right out of COVID. We basically just got in the van and said we need it because we we visited here, and it was right after they dropped the mask mandate. It was like that that week. And all the bars were like filled with people. People couldn't wait to get back to shit. There was like DJs playing to full crowds and like all different kinds of shows and stuff going on. I'm like, dude, metal needs metal can come back now. Then, like, what about the metal kids? You right. know what I mean? And I'm like, we're they're the ones that are all like a little bit more defensive about the whole thing. It's like, you know, it's like we're gonna wait until it became. It'd be oh like Texas opening up. We're gonna wait until it's the right time. That oh, was a, so that was a thing. Like they were gonna be the dictators of what was like the right time. And I'm like, dude, fuck that. Let's get a show booked out here, and let's go. Let's fly out and go. So it's funny you mentioned that because we so born with Cyrus being a band. I'm sure most people have kept tabs that we're just a very busy band and we toured nonstop ever since. 2007 when our first album came out we have just been non-stop touring and the pandemic was interesting just pump the brakes on that so when we were one we were proud to be one of the first few metal bands at least that i had heard of going back on tour yeah. as soon as possible after the pandemic uh but it was funny because it was controversial actually to go on tour at that that mm -hmm. time where you announce a tour and half your comments are like Oh my God! You're gonna kill my grandma! Like, yikes! Yikes! Ooh, Ooh! Yikes! Really? Oh Too wow! Soon. Wow, guys! Yeah. Do you not care about people? Yeah. So it was. <laughs> it was. I mean, it was a controversial time to be out. Um, but that was when we did those shows too, and we got that same flack from like we saw some stuff from other hater bands from back home that are like musicians that uh, still aren't doing shit probably, but they're like. 
like some bands just go to Texas and play shows. And it's like, yeah, motherfucker, yeah. you wish you could get a show booked. I know. I got a show booked. There's people going to shows. And like 180 people showed up to my show that I booked on on, yeah. well, on a remember, Wednesday right out of COVID. I remember you grinding me. Actually, you were like, hey, man, this sucks. We're all sitting at home. Let's get some shows going. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'm sitting in my apartment day after day. I mean, I made some cool music. Sure. But yeah. I mean, <laughs> I want to play shows. You know, this yeah. sucks. But, did you uh, think it was going to be, like, over? Like, like, did you, you know, a lot of people were like, it's, yeah. it's over. Oh, I did. Um, I, yeah, so I remember I actually had some kind of almost uh, life-altering moment. Where... Hello, check, check, check. Sorry, sorry. Um, so I was actually smoking weed in my apartment, and it was the, the uh, in 2020, it was actually the last time I've ever smoked weed. I guess it's been four years now because I had a panic attack because I turned on the news. Oh, it was shit. just like, the world is ending. And so I, I was like, I got to get out of my apartment. I kind of freaked out. I was too high. And I went for like a <laughs> jog into the woods and didn't look back. I just, I was just it's running. It's like a movie. No. Yeah, no, it was, it was, I was, I was having like, I don't want to say a mental breakdown because that's a little dramatic, but I sure. was, I was just like, uh, too stoned, and I, I ran in, you know, I got a great run in. Let's just say <laughs> you, got the, you got some good cardio in. Yeah, but I, I came back, I'm like, well, I'm never smoking weed again. Does I, that mean <laughs> I can't smoke weed right now? Hey, I'm I, did I just trigger right you? No, no, I'm going to smoke <laughs> weed right now. Uh, so, what happened after that, though? Uh, so, well, I came back, and then I was not high anymore, but then I actually just decided, hey, maybe I should stop smoking weed, because that <laughs> felt terrible. Because that sucked. <laughs> So I don't I don't smoke weed anymore because nice. the pandemic ruined that for me. But yeah, it's fine. But you did for a minute think it was all gonna be over. I th I thought that the world as we know it was just ending. And but your life is so like I was we were talking about this in the car a little bit on our way over here. But like my like for me the band has always been like if we can do stuff with the band that's big and we can you know keep like making a living and doing it full time has pretty much never been. Like it's, I'm pretty self-aware in knowing that that's probably not in the car. Like it's, it's gonna be really, it's gonna be a lottery. It's a lottery. It's winning the lottery if we get there. You know what I mean? Like it's one in a million chance that you're, I'm gonna be doing this full time from the beginning. Now it maybe seems more realistic, but I, but I think that's how a lot of people feel. Like they just have to, they're gonna go to, you know, do a job and then they're gonna do music on the side for passion project. And that's how it is for me. But like for you, it's or somebody in your position, these touring bands that are constantly going out and like. You need to keep touring. You need it. You need this thing to keep going. It's the only way. Yeah, and uh, and to be honest, even then, if we, we we stay very busy with tours, nonstop little breaks at home. Even then, especially with the costs of just just everything, and not only the tour industry, gas prices, inflation, living costs, you name it. Um, even then. It's it. I'll be honest. It's it's not enough. You need yeah. something else, and you need you need to, a side hustle. Yeah, hundred percent. So like, even just staying and people assume because they've heard of your band and because you're busy, they think that's enough to stay afloat. That you make a living doing that. It yeah, by I mean, we do, but it's you know, you, you it it helps to have something else. Like you, you kind of need to have something else. So yeah. when when I'm home, and as you know, I do session work. When I'm home from tour, I. Yep. I'm actually way busier at home than on tour. Tour is almost like a working vacation, kind of. Hundred yeah. percent. At least in the United States, it is because I'll, you know, have a drum tech. Shout out to Isaac. Um, but yeah, and on tour, it's like technically, it, uh, at least in a United States tour, I work for what one one hour a day. I'm on stage for an hour, then it's kind of a lot of dead time. But when I'm at home, I I pack a very busy schedule with recording drums, recording original music for people. Um, I actually recently did something I'm really proud of. I uh, helped write a couple songs on the new Signs of the Swarm album. Oh, nice. That's Shout out uh, Signs of the Swarm. Yeah, I, I, I don't those know guys. those guys, but I love that. I like that band. That band's fucking sick. Dude, they're heavy, They're so man. sick yeah, live, too. I saw are. them just recent, like a couple months ago, just destroying Come and Take It. Yeah. Just destroying it. So funny story about Bobby, their their drummer. He, he used to be their bassist, which blows my mind. Whoa, you don't ever see that one. <laughs> he's so well. He's so guitarist good at drums. goes to bass sometimes yeah, yeah, or like, whatever, vice versa. He's but. so good at drums, and I'm like, who put this guy on the bass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys. How long did it take you to figure out that he shreds on drums? Yeah, man, I love those guys so much. They're uh, they're they're great. Love signs of the swarm, but yeah. So I do 
Uh, that's my side hustle is, is when I'm home, I write original music for people. I do drums. Drums is a big one, clearly, as I'm known as a drummer. So if your band needs killer drums, hit me up on Instagram. I'll give you my email and all that stuff, and I uh, would love to record some You drums. made the theme song for this podcast. I actually did, yeah. You did. Are you still using it? I do. I use it every day. I'm proud of you. Or every episode. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Thank you for helping me. I appreciate it. It was. It's great because it was one of those things too, and I, it, you could call this a review or whatever. But I sent you that. I sent you like. I just wanted to be like a like a funny kind of a parody metal song, and then like just with like gore cast, just like tuned down or something. Gore did you? And you re- did you record that? Yeah, yeah, I did. And then you I like did. pitched it way down. It was or actually exactly. It was is on this this. Uh, it was on the SM seven B. Nice. Uh, I just did a gore cast yeah and, and then you put effects on it yeah sure. not surprisingly not that really? many effects too awesome. yeah well yeah and it's i i tell i tell everybody that they're like dude who made that i was like dude, camera man. so yeah. the podcast is sick of hearing me say it probably but you I know what i'm excited about can't it remember the direction you gave me i, I just say... told you to make it dumb and funny or something and like and then at the end of it you put that little you are listening to gore cast you idiot and i was like done sold complete sold project well, check that one off i knew you i knew you well enough too at the time that i was like kind of knew your character and about what you would want so i think it helped something to, fun. to know you yeah. to know you yeah maybe we'll maybe we'll do a rebrand maybe after episode 100 we'll do another we'll do a new one you deserve it we're on thanks dude we're on episode this is this will be 50 54 so we're cruising that we're is cruising awesome. man. That is awesome. not a lot of podcasts make it past like you know five ten like just because they go, they put it out there, and they're like, "Oh, I'm not Joe Rogan overnight famous." So then I'm like, and I think people do that with a lot of stuff. I think people do it with music and anything where they're like, "Oh, like you know, I put I worked so hard on this piece of music, I put it out, and nobody like nobody listened. I didn't, it didn't blow up, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna quit and move on to something different." That's that's actually what I did with my rap album and my rap career. Oh, your rap, <laughs> dude, your rap album's so good though. You have to do another CSL. You're the only, you're the only one who listens to it. We are. Our band loves CSL, dude. Yeah. We, that's like a constant van bump, dude. But that's yeah. an example of what you said when people are like, "Oh, why aren't you gonna do another rap album?" I'm like, because nobody listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to C Money Sign L yeah. CSL, you guys. It's like Shadow Band on Spotify. Like, I can't even search for it. I don't know what happened. Yeah. But, what uh, What made you want to do that? I'm curious about that. Maybe if we talk um, about it enough, maybe the, people will ke- get curious and the, go fucking. I think it was to it. it was the the pandemic and like actually buying one of these microphones where I was like talking into it just testing it and i was uh-huh. like this is kind of trippy like to have a voice now i can I'm, do anything yeah it's yeah. power it's a powerful feeling to have a voice because i've always been you know the drummer mm-hmm. like playing guitars on albums keyboards whatever but like never my voice really so for the first time i was like this is actually a lot of power i can say whatever i want you're gonna hear it it's um, the perfect blend of to sell your rap album to people. So hopefully we get another. I'm I'm dead. I'm dead set on getting another CSL album, dude. So we have to blow. We have to blow it up. It might happen. It's on me if we if it's on us, you guys, to 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 blow this up so we can get another one. So if you, yeah, it if can't you, be over. <laughs> if you guys haven't heard the the rap project, it's uh just search C money sign L. Uh, but yeah, to be honest, I want to do if if I were to put out more music, I'd do a complete rebrand mm-hmm. i would do probably singles this time yeah um and then i would i would like change the name too yeah. i think i don't like the have name have you thought about any other names <laughs> c loach makes the C-Loche? most sense c loach is no one can qu- no one can question that but no. i don't know if, if if you have anything in mind but. i don't know i would have to think on it i'll text you something but i love the music because it's such a blend of like you're so musically talented just like a lot of people don't know i didn't know until you told me re- like uh, last year that you wrote you write most of the a lot of the guitar stuff too right a lot of the music for boo what like what percentage is it so um the first album i wrote and recorded all the instruments on the new rain like everything except for vocals flex it's definitely a flex um, iconic album I was, yeah <laughs> Yeah, I was I was 18 and in the studio with Michael Keane and crazy. we worked together very well together. It was it was awesome. And then people don't know that I did the same with A Higher Place minus the song Exist. That was Lee McKinney's first song that he had written for the band that was released and which phenomenal song and that really started his growth and 
with you know contributing as a songwriter so yeah higher place every i did recorded all the instruments ex except for the vocals except for the song exist then the discovery which i also don't get any credit for writing anything on that <laughs> album yeah uh, me and lee wrote half the songs half of me half lee and then uh jason richardson wrote behold and he did a bunch of solos and right. i thought uh, like all of us although we were butting heads that whole album it was really we were band almost broke up writing that album but yeah. I, it's a great album we all worked it's together. unfortunate that that stuff had to go down b the way it did just because i think anyone like you know we're friends now but i'm still a fan of the band from you know my childhood and so it's like we love that out like fan we as fans love that album and it's just like ah you know i'm sure you've heard this you hear this shit all the time but it's like you know it's like it sucks that politics made it so that we don't get to hear see those songs be played anymore because you guys don't like to play those songs really right mm. or do you sometimes? when you say you guys yeah not me i'm i'm begging to play those oh, songs oh shit okay <laughs> yeah. all right i didn't mean, i didn't want to get too deep with it it's I not my decision i don't know how deep you want to go on any of that stuff we don't have to talk about that stuff if you don't want to talk about but it, yeah but. we made a killer album together um yeah it was awesome but yeah so i uh speaking of writing music i actually my other so we're done talking about the rap album. Yeah. I actually have another um, project that I'm also very passionate about called Unsolicited. Unsolicited, yes. It is my yes. solo, and you're aware of that, and it's my my solo metal project. So I do already have two albums out. Very shreddy, Just very heavy. Very shreddy. It's like instrumental Born of Osiris. Sounds like more of like our early stuff a bit more. Uh, and then I just finished the third album. Nice. So that I'm, I'm hoping cruising on that stuff. Yeah, you're just a powerhouse of creativity, dude. Absolutely. How do you, how do you do it? Because I, if we can get real for a second, I, and I talk about this all the time, just like on here is like how, to, and I try to figure out how people like stay in the creative zone. Because for me, I get so bombarded by like there's all this stuff I want to do. You know what I mean? And like there's all this, there's some stuff that I have to get done. And then it's like. I, and then sometimes I'll get so stressed out about it that I just don't want to do any of it. And then not doing it makes me feel even worse because I'm not doing and I'm not yes. making, right? Yes. Then I, then it's a spiral. Like yeah, once you yeah. reach that point, it, for me, it's a total, it's, it's a total like uh, unmotivated, like it's like a snake eating itself. Cause I get, I get sad that I'm not doing anything and, and I'm not doing anything, you know, because I'm just like, I don't know. We have the same brain chemistry there, yeah. and hopefully this will will help answer your question a little bit. But lately, so I think when you're a teenager, the teenage brain is so exciting because all this these new ideas and new discoveries and the creativity can, is, is almost so easy. And then as you get older, you get a little bit more burnt out, a little bit more jaded. It's harder to enjoy music, harder to enjoy movies. That's just the reality. You're not... It's mm. it's almost like when you're a teenager and growing up, you still have a, a bit of that sparkle of being, you know, childhood when things are just magnificent and the most simple things can just be so beautiful. And unfortunately, it's it gets more difficult as you get older. So you have to really get creative. So f for me to to get in that mindset, actually, what really helps is first doing session work because there's motivation there that I want to do a good job for somebody's project, be proud of it, and of course get paid. We mm -hmm. all like money, right? And so that motivation, then when I finally finish the project and they're stoked on it, I find that I'm able to make so many new <coughs> like presets, messing with new tones, find new keyboard tones, new mm. guitar tone. I just made a new template. I'm like, this sounds baller. Like this is awesome. So actually for me to kind of stay creative and inspired and motivated is working on other people's music because it just i'm like and every time i'm always like oh my god i wish i wrote that for my own music right you can't have that <clears throat> this is mine yeah. now <laughs> you know hang on it's gonna be another day or two yeah. uh yeah and oh the, yeah. yeah i'm still working on it i, uh, yeah, I need yeah. to start over from scratch <laughs> and for some reason for some reason when i like write songs for other people i end up making it even better than my own music i don't know why and i hate that why no just why are you doing that <laughs> no i'm just kidding but yeah so it's uh so but, to answer yeah. your question, that's how I get inspired lately, working on actually other people's music. That's funny that you say that, because it's. I think there's something similar with me that I've, and that's why, like, 
this stuff that I do with uh, with Ridley, the comedian that I that I do I do his podcast with him. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Yeah. Um, it it like that like I you know neither of us are making money off of that. It's this is a passion, but I'm approaching it from like uh, starting a band with somebody. That's like what a lot of these comics don't have. They're out here living in their car trying to get on kill tony think their life is going to change yeah where and, and it's like they're like lone rangers until you blow up then you can hire people to do shit for you where it's like i'm like let's get in the van bro you know what i mean like let's yeah you're let's, fine to rough I'm, it up i'm fine to like and it, the focus doesn't have to be on me you know what i mean like you can you it's like we're kind of doing co the comedy grind as like i'm throwing in like elements of like like being in a band it's like a team effort here to get this dude going yeah, you know what I mean. Well, like, you have and he's so close. much personal experience too that many people don't have, and that helps give you a comedic edge as well. Because there's just so many things. Just living in a van, most people will never know what it's like to to live in a van, and I think yeah. that's you have the that edge with and, five and other dudes. With five other dudes, <laughs> <laughs> just imagine. Yeah, yeah. Most people cannot relate, so I think that does give you a, a bit more. Well, I mean, it definitely gives me something, and I think the ten years of like doing stage stuff 10 plus years you know i think i've put my ten thousand hours in on a stage oh you have and you I know what i mean it and shows though when i see your band i when i see bystander and i just see your confidence it is just you can tell you can tell like the time and the passion that's been put in we love that shit I, that's that to me like it it's changed now a little bit but that was like for a long time the only thing i liked about it was the playing on stage right Right. Like everything else was like jumping through hoops. Oh, I got to track my shit. Oh, I got to write lyrics. You know what I mean? Like over time, I, I've healed my relationship yeah, with those where you, processes. Where you're kind of, you're kind of like down to do it all. At and this I think, point. If, I think if I'm being honest with myself, it comes from a place of like, can I even do this? And that is frustrating. Like of cha challenging yourself. Their music that the guys are writing, it's not just, it's not easy, stupid shit. I have to like make this good. Like I have to do. Can I make? Can I serve this music well? You know what I mean? And it's like, and I think the with the stage thing, I'm like, that's my caveman brain. I'm like, I can do that. Can I can perform. Oh, I've seen you know the caveman. I mean? He comes out. He's and I'm like, <laughs> and it I'm works like, for you. I'm like, I can I I know I can do that, but I think that's the thing. It's like with the recording or like writing lyrics, I'm like, can I do this? Every time I go, every time I go back, it's like, can I do can I do this on this song? Can I and I, I figure it out. Yeah. I can't. I and can. I, I can, and I know I can. So I push sometimes through. Sometimes it, it feels like it doesn't doesn't get easier because you compare you compare everything to your best work or your most popular song, or you're like, yeah. uh, you know, does this hold a candle to our our hit song? Or you're just it, second guessing yourself all the time. Yeah, yeah. And so I. But to go back to what you were saying, yes, I think uh, I've found a lot of inspiration in like getting myself out of those holes. Like even when I when I when I'm like I haven't booked a podcast or had done a podcast in a couple of days, and I'm like, "Fuck, I'm a failure" because I'm not being consistent or whatever, beating myself up. Or I have like a client, food client that I do photo work for that I'm like putting shit off that I know I need to get done. But I'm in that cycle where like I'm not doing, and so I'm sad, and so I'm not doing because I'm sad. You know what I mean? And so I'm like, yep. I'm in this cycle. But at least I have. I have to work on. I have to get Ridley's out. I have to get Michael's podcast out because that's for him. That's not for me, really. You know what I mean? Like it's somebody else. That, like you're saying, doing session work for somebody. It's like there's somebody else on the line here. Yes, I have to I get this done for them. So yeah. So what you're saying, like, I that's why the the session work is so. Uh, it it really gets the creative juices flowing because there's motivation there. Now, what what's difficult about just sitting with like a blank canvas, whatever it be, whatever you're an artist, if you're recording in Logic Pro or if you're doing a painting, everyone, all most artists understand that starting the piece is the hardest part. Yeah. Just starting it, and because the motivation is not necessarily there, I'm like, okay, oh, like just sit. It's like sitting there and someone pointing at you and be like, be creative. <laughs> and it's like <laughs> create something great right now. Go. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's tough, and that's where the motivation comes in. That, like you said, someone's waiting on you. You're like, and then and then I have passion for. I know at least there's one person who's anticipating this and wants to hear it. Okay. Because <laughs> I mean, if yeah, you know, if you're just doing something <clears throat> just on your own, and no one's expecting it. I don't. I'm not the the kind of guy to be annoying and send all my, text all my friends the the music I'm listening to. Maybe I'm just that's my me being self conscious, but I don't like to do that to be honest. I'm be like. 
you'll hear it when it's released. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it's it, it helps a lot to just really get in that zone. Another thing also that's helped me lately, like a very newer thing I've discovered musically to help get creative is actually studying chord progressions just on YouTube. I mean, the amount of music lessons you can get for free is crazy oh, on, on yeah. YouTube. It's <clears throat> nuts. But um, anything lessons. Any le- yeah. I learned how to do lessons. camera shit on YouTube, and I make a living doing it. It's like yeah. I mean, look at this is insane. Yeah. You're, you're like we don't make a living off this yet, brother, but we're working yeah, on it. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but your setup is crazy. This is like real deal. Yeah. But yeah, I just I'm lately my new. Uh, my new fun thing to nerd out at home has been chord progression. Uh, yeah, learning like jazz uh, chord mm. progressions. They they really fascinate me. And it's although I'm a pretty diverse musician and I started on piano, I think I utilize more the classical kind of just you know Beethoven, Beethoven or just movie music sounds, uh, yeah. John Williams, Danny Elfman kind of style, but. I'm like, well, what's up with the, the jazz world and the jazz chords? And, and it's a, it's an area that I didn't <clears throat> have never naturally picked up on, so I'm just fascinated by a lot of the qu- chord progressions because I think I would have never discovered them on my own mm-hmm. with a lot of other music I've just discovered by ear and messing around. But it's been cool motivation uh, to utilize these jazz chords. What are you into, looking like, up music. when you look this? When you look in the if people uh, want to look shit up like that, I like, just look you... up jazz. Piano chords, okay. Just type jazz piano chords. And it just and comes up with just like a. It's just a piano. A GoPro it's, on a, a, it's, it's just on a. Keys. It's just somebody oh. with, with the piano and tons of videos, and you can put in all different prompts. But yeah. so, and it's not like I'm stealing music. A lot of people use the same chords, but at least you get a nice start to a song. Where like, oh, I like those chords. I'll use those th- chords. Pick my own BPM. Add my own melody to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's been a source of inspiration. So you will hear on the the third unsolicited album that yeah. there's some some jazzy stuff and Ooh. some brand new some brand new sounds on there. Doesn't sound like me, which is cool because I I don't want to always sound like me. Ne- always instrumental for that one. Is it always going to be instrumental? It will. That's be. your instrumental baby. Yes. Nice. Except I'm singing on uh, oh, yeah, a remember. lot of it. I sing a lot, but there's oh, okay. not really like words. But there's it's a like, lot of oh, yeah. There's a lot of, of oh yeah yeah. Yeah, so but there's no. Oh, baby, baby, how <laughs> was I supposed to know? <laughs> or the uh, well, like the you know, like the high, the auto tune high I pitch. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Ooh, that was good. That was <clears> good. Oh, dude, I'm I'm a hundred percent a singer now. I know. Since I've seen you now, since I've seen you, I'm like, the, I'm gonna show you new bystander in the car. Half of it has cleans on it. And they sound cool, and I'm so happy. I've never been more excited about a piece of music in my life. So Ooh, we're gonna listen to it. I know it. what we're doing on the drive back to the venue we're to the dri- show. We're gonna drive slow. It's gonna oh. stop. We're gonna stop at the gas station. No, also, also that, you better you gotta take me to the karaoke bar later. Let's go. Oh, we're gonna we go to uh, what's that place called? Uh, I'm spacing on it right now. I always drive by it. I know exactly where it is. There's a there's a there's a place that's a karaoke bar every day. <gasps> yeah, it's that they are a the premier karaoke bar. And it's a, there's a place that's karaoke bar every day. I can't remember where it is, but it's not far from the venue. Let's we do can it. Go. Um, Let's do it. But uh, but fuck, I forgot what I was going. Oh yeah, the I. But it's similar to what you were saying, I think I went back and just started listening to old music. I was like, you know what? I've just been listening to like the same 2009 metal albums. You know, 2009 to to the range. You know, the the, the, the golden, golden the era. golden era. From, Jinx. From yeah. from oh nine to twenty thirteen or something. I don't know. For me, that was just my that was when I was the most into shit. And that that, you know, like within the Ruins Elite album is like that's just like, like my one of my favorite albums in the genre to me. You know, and I don't know if you remember, oh, I remember which, it, dude. I, I love them. I love them so much. I think they ne- I think they're they they they're doing just fine, but I don't I still think they're criminally underrated I think forever. The world has they're never for- never been ready for that band. No, no, and they're so fucking good. But um I started going back and listening to like old stuff that I used to listen to, like, you know, for everything from like corn and and that stuff to like, like new metal stuff to like, Incubus and shit. And I like rediscovered how much I love that band, and I was like, Pardon oh my, me. yeah, yeah, exactly. Pardon me while I burst. 
<laughs> into flames. You know, like okay, that's yeah, way better than I was doing. <laughs> uh, uh, I knew it was one something like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we could probably you could probably do it, it, it but his it, voice is hard to re- replicate. That whole band is gnarly. Like if you yeah. listen to the musicianship of of Incubus, the lyrics it's are so nuts. sick. Are they? I they never are. really yeah. delved, delved into. There's it. one. There's one called uh, "Blood on the Ground" where he's like. Um, I bite my tongue every time you come around because blood in my mouth beats blood on the ground. And I'm like, dude, that's hard. Whoa. That's hard. I thought you were going to say. That's just a song about not kicking someone's ass, dude. That's you know what awesome. I, mean? <laughs> I thought you were going to say blood on the dance floor. No. Okay. No, I never. That was a, that was a weird thing. To, I, I kind of always ignored that. It was in my peripheral. Like, just right. everything that went on with that and any of that. I think I, like, pressed play for one moment and it was like, wah, wah. And it sounded really weird and like whiny and scary, and I just turned it off. And I was like, I'm, you know, we're just gonna put that over there. But I don't know. That's kind of a strange. That was that was a strange time. It was like scene. What was that? It was strange times when I listened to them. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. You were into that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I wasn't. I'm no, no cut, I'm not dogging on anybody. Cut this part out. Cut yeah, this not, part out. Not, no, not dogging on anybody. The, there was another they had one. Some bangers, dude. Yeah. But then the uh, one of the the members, we won't talk about it. I don't know. Some something happened, but yeah. Anyway. But yeah, I started finding a bunch of old like, you know, just like I started listening to like Dreams from Fleetwood Mac radio, and it's just like so much old good music that I was like, oh yeah, he said Doobie Brothers slap. Yeah, you know talk, what I mean. Talk like, about getting inspired, though. I yeah, mean, the old shit gets me hyped on like singing and gets me hyped, gets me inspired to take risks and do different shit. I don't know. Oh, absolutely. Where do you start a song? If you're, do you usually start with a riff that you're like, I just want this in there somewhere, and then you like build around it? Because that's it's such a good question, and, and it's it's different every time. But I will tell you what uh, tried and true method for me is that I always suggest to other people for metal. Just start with the drums. Mm. As the drummer of the band, I'm telling you, just start with the drums. Is that a biased opinion? You want to <laughs> go? You just want to go first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Why so is that though? Okay. From a, somebody, I don't know shit about writing music. I just, I just do what I, I just do it and do. I think I just you do, do the know, vocals. I think you do know shit about. I have writing a gorilla music, understanding of it for sure. I have. For a, sure. I'm like a football well, coach. Like I watch tape. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like those boys. Those boys can play. You know what I mean? Well, like, whatever you're doing, you're doing it right. So keep. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I guess to use an example, our first album, The New Rain, was recorded. I recorded just the drums first, and that really opened up a lot of doors for creativity with what comes next. So it would be some of the songs on that album, if they without if you took the other instruments away, it would just sound like a drum solo for two and a half minutes yeah. kind of thing. And I was just recording drum parts I thought were cool. And at the time, you know, I was probably 16 years old just learning how to use Pro Tools. I had a pretty crude setup of just drum mics. Uh, didn't know how to use the metronome click function yet. So mm. for that entire album, almost every riff was a different tempo because there was no tempos at all. So by the time I went in, you know, with Michael Keane, him being more, you know, fluent in like digital recording and stuff he was like well listen we're gonna need to put this all on a a tempo map uh i think he was using like digital performer at the time and so we would go by riff by riff and he'd be like well what do you think the tempo is he's like well i don't i'm like i don't know he's like we'll play it play the part he's like okay yeah that sounds like 230 or that sounds like 145 or or whatever so uh, most of those songs started with drums and then when i would hear the drum part I would just keep doing it over and over. Have the guitar. So mm, usually, yeah, usually, okay, I see honestly, it now. I can y- see it now. Usually, you're the painting order- on top of the drums. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, and th- this is mostly talking about metal and for like right. technical metal, deathcore, gent. Um, it's just a lot easier to have the backbone of like to hear the drums and then pick up the guitar and just riff over the drums. And people don't understand how much time it takes and how much trial and error it is because they think something sounds really cool i'm like well you should have heard the first take sh- you yeah. should have heard the first 236 ideas that i was <laughs> yeah, trying exactly. over that part it wasn't that sick like it's this is impressive because i, I put a lot of time into it that yeah. people most non-musicians wouldn't even understand you basically are putting it through a sifter 
Yeah. It's like you're yeah. putting the sand through a sifter and then it gets finer and fine. Have you ever made hash before, dude? I, <laughs> have you ever I mean, seen I was how a stoner, but I haven't have made it. They, they make them with these hash bags where they put them on like a Home Depot bucket and they put like seven different bags over and each one is a different grade of like yeah, yeah. fineness you're or whatever. Sifting out, you're sifting, you're sifting out like the and, good you, and then you yeah. sit there with like a paint stirrer and you like push it into it, into the bag that's, and then you take the bag off and then you push the next one and you keep pushing it down and that's like that's a, it. That's exactly what you're doing with songwriting. Yeah, almost, yeah. Right? It's it like, is. And songwriting is like making hash. Yeah. If there's any <laughs> takeaway from this episode, dude, I want them to know that songwriting is like making hash. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Just remember all your hash making experience. But no, that is crazy. Um, and yeah, people don't realize how much effort goes into this shit at all. No, no, they don't. Like yeah. the mu- musicians know, and I, I do think it's probably a lot of musicians watching but don't don't get down on yourself too if if you're like why is this taking so long or oh you know why why does this equipment cost so much money like that because it does it it you know good gear costs a lot of money sometimes and writing good ideas takes a lot of time yeah which is also money so which is money yeah, yeah so you know, and it's like taking away from like it's like nights that you're not spending at the bars or being social, being social. Yeah, we were just sacrifices. talking. We talked about sacrifices before yeah. we turned the cameras on, too. Luckily, yeah, I had like so many. I had anxiety and depression in in high school, uh, so I staying home was a no brainer for me. I didn't want to hang out with anybody, and so nice. immediately, like when I like when I would be in school, I didn't really, you know, school wasn't my thing. But I would a lot of times if I was just really frustrated with a test, or I was like, I'm gonna fail this for sure. I'd turn it over and I would write. I would write drums. I would write drum parts. I'm like, like well, writing out, music writing out notes? music notes. Yeah. Okay. So there so you have learned all that stuff. So there you have brace legs. You know, it's yeah. like yeah. I was like, hmm, I could either fail this test or write the drum part for brace legs. So which do you think I chose? Brace legs is my favorite song. Doing that part with you guys every night. Oh, dude. Oh that my was god, so you much, killed it. It was so much fun for me. I, I, one of those. Li- it's like a. Crazy that it happened to me. You know what I mean? It's just fun. I love it. It's We'd it's a, it's a great memory. I watch that video every every now and then when I'm going through my shit and my phone trying to free up space and I'm like, fuck, dude. Oh, it warms my heart. You it crush, went hard. You crush that with us every night. Hell yeah. So funny story. Speaking of uh, writing, writing drum parts. So I went uh, to a rehab when I was 16. My parents sent me to an inpatient rehab called Rosecrans. In Rockford, yes. yeah, Rockford, Illinois. So the way that song, Rosecrans, is track one of our very first album. For those who don't know, in the old name of the band, right? Yes, it was also the old name of the band, and inspired by my situation, mm-hmm. I guess. So it was inpatient. I was there for about a month, and they had group therapy each day. So we would all sit in a circle. We would have notepads, and we would talk. So. During group therapy, I would actually just, I was writing a drum part, and I ended up writing the drum part to Rosecrans. Like, mainly, it was mainly the the break that just, it makes no sense. It's the part that's like, you know that part? Yeah. That's just like a tongue twister in any instrument. So I I wrote that drum part kind of just for fun, because I was like, Oh, I'm gonna go home and record this and just see it happens. Like it's kind of ridiculous, but why not? I'm bored. This would be fun, kind of thing. Uh, and then I end up. They let me have an acoustic guitar in the room, so I wrote most of the guitar parts for Rosecrans uh, at Rosecrans. So it was a that's crazy. So yeah, by the time I was just, I had a lot to look forward to getting out of there. Dude, you realize that's like your, that's like your your hip hop mixtape. That's hard as hell. Dude. Yeah, that's like that's like your hip hop mixtape. Like you wrote this album in jail. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And named it after the yeah. place that you were at. That's if that's it, that's like it your was, it's your mixtape origin story. Yeah, if it, if it was jail, maybe that would have been know, hard. But well, I mean, for a, where you're from, Chicago, right? Yeah, yeah. Like for a white right. kid from Chicago, pretty, you know what I mean? It's pretty hard. Pretty fly for a white guy. Yeah, right? yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. I love it. So yeah, that's uh, I thought that's an interesting story. Most people don't don't know that. Yeah. Um, but where did the name for Boo come from? I don't even think I know that. Oh, that's a great. Uh, 
Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, naturally, Sumerian records being Sumerian representing ancient Egyptian mm -hmm. culture. So the Osiris part came from, we were with um, Ash Abelton and at the time, Sean Keith, who was working at Sumerian and uh, we were just, we were just hanging out. I think this was during the time we were actually recording our first album because they they looked at us and like our name the band name was Rosecrans at the time and they're like you got to change that name <laughs> we're, like, <laughs> we're gonna we gotta get rid of that name brother we listen yeah. we like what you're doing but uh the name's gotta go and we were like well i was i was like at first i was like no what do you mean we can't change the name we have so many fans at home like no one's gonna know who we are and they're like listen <laughs> <laughs> they're like, listen, after the this... Name, the name sucks, okay? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. They're like, listen, first of all, the name sucks. And uh, second of all, after after you put out this album, and you do, you know, you you go on tour, your old name's not going to matter. And I... It was tough for me. I didn't want to change the name, but um, looking back on it, the name sucks. It, it really does. Dude, uh, I feel that. Ro Rosecrans is not a good name. And uh, I'm just so grateful to me, the, the band name Born with Cyrus, not to toot my own horn but i think it's it's an iconic band name it is I it just cool. is that's why i was like i don't even think i know the origin of it because it just is so, it's one of those band names that just is right you don't you don't ask about it so we Weird. were we uh so i, I want to take some credit for f my band and i so the the, the label sumerian came up with the osiris part and then we were spitballing we're like well what osiris we're like sons of osiris we're like mm -hmm. that's tacky and then you know somebody was like born in Osiris. We're like, kind of sick. All right. Okay. Let's yeah. let's let's run it. Coming up with a band name also one of uh, something that people don't realize oh, the worst. sucks ass. Oh my god. It sucks ass. It's it's actually worse than coming up with song titles, which is terrible. Yeah. Coming up. With, I just had to do that. It's all it, taken. Yeah. It's all taken. Had we to do we that. just put out a song called Elevate. You know how many people have a song <laughs> called Elevate? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's a good song. Like, thank you. Yeah, to go check it out. Still releasing consistent yeah, yeah. bangers yeah. constantly. Well, oh yeah, by the way, it's we, all you know how to do. By the way, we did just put out a new song called Elevate and it, it rocks. So, we're going to play it tonight. Oh, can't and wait. We actually just put out another new song called A Mind Short Circuiting, and that's cool too. So. The last album didn't really it I after I saw it live so every night it just and i i wonder if you go through this with bands that you've toured with so this is a kind of a question that i have for you but that seeing you guys play that live that album is so special to me which, which one angels and uh, oh and yeah angels. angel alien yeah it's it, it's just it's like though that music means something entirely different to me now that's awesome, after man. seeing I, and i don't know if you have any do you have any albums of bands that you've toured with that they were it's like when they were playing all those songs off of that you know what I mean? Like that you're that when you listen to it from watching it over and over again each night or I don't know. You know, does that question make sense? Oh, no, it My definitely two does. Right it, now? No, <laughs> no, I should say like we haven't toured with them, but uh, Lamb of God they oh, play yeah. laid to rest. I, it's like oh, yeah. core memory unlocked um, and just growing up with uh, hearing Chris Adler's drumming and. I know he's not in the band anymore and uh yeah. shout out to art cruz who does just an incredible job also he's he's a friend of mine art kills it he's awesome i couldn't think of a better replacement but yeah uh lamb of god is one of those bands where i, I see them play that song live and suddenly i just get a flashback of hearing metal for the first time yeah. and just that triplet like chuggy just lamb of god and inspired me so much between the buried and me as well um, yeah. if they play anything off their first few albums i'm like whoa bt bam colors I remember listening colors to that. if they yeah they play anything off of colors i'm like my favorite bt bam albums i had are bt bam on, on my zune what what is a zune <clears throat> you don't remember the zune back in the day what dude? is that you don't remember the zune i wish we had somebody here to pull it up where tony and everybody's gone so it's just us two in here but uh <clears throat> it was the microsoft like ipod thing that they tried to oh, compete okay. with you an don't MP, remember that an and, mp3 player it, yeah it the... looked like a big it looked like a big uh like hard drive almost like that had it's a screen on clunky. it yeah but i i had it loaded up with that was how somebody gave me their thing to you know listen to uh all their music on and i was like oh shit, BTB. that's how i discovered a lot of bands but anyway your favorite your favorite album 
Um, oh yeah, my favorite between the Barry and Me albums are uh, the Silent Circus, Alaska in Colors, and and you were talking about getting inspired, you know, back. I think it's nice to keep coming back to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's it's definitely it's a helpful topic as it's shit, a this big shit part is hard, man. It's really hard. This yeah, it's so, hard to keep doing shit. Um, yeah, my number my number one for creativity though is get inspired by somebody else's work and be like, yeah. wow, like that. It doesn't mean copy them, but it it means do something maybe in the same vein, maybe in the same <clears throat> even something as like. I wonder what what tempo is that? I like that's a good feel. Okay, then make start a song with the same tempo, or you know what tuning is that, or or whatever. But uh, yeah, listening to Between the Baron and Me, just the sporadicness of what they were doing, I'd never heard anything like that. And the drums and just the su- sudden like triplets out of nowhere. I'm like, okay, I gotta try that. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I had a question that I wrote down something I forgot to ask you when we were talking about unsolicited. Why why do those songs not end up being boo songs? Or like why do that you know what I mean? Why not one right. or the other or what how do you like pick and choose? I guess you yeah. That's that's a good question. So some some songs that ended up being Born of Osiris rejects that just like no like didn't end up getting vo- vocals recorded over them. Well, I can't force anyone to record the vocals, so naturally the song doesn't get used. Yeah. Uh, and then I just release it under unsolicited. Sometimes I'll do like a remix and spice it up. Uh, I like uh, the third album that's coming out definitely has a, a boo reject song on it or two, but I just, you know, yeah, I I, I spice it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, but yeah, when you have you have a few people writing, it's not always up to me. Okay, that makes sense. And uh, but I also all, most of the unsolicited stuff, I purposely started that project because I didn't want to have to play it live. OK, you want so, it to be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So like if I'm going to write something for Boo, I'm like, oh, we can we can all play this like so and it just it's awesome. Oh, Maybe I always forget about that part. I don't play an instrument. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? what? Come on, guys! Yeah, you guys yeah, can't yeah. play this shit. Come on, you got one job. Right? Yeah. So I like. Oh yeah, when, it's hard. When I'm purposely writing a song for unsolicited, a lot of the time I'll, I will make it purposely over the top because I'm aware that no one's planning on on playing it. Mm. And not to say a lot of it can't be played, but <clears throat> um, yeah, the purpose of the project was just to. Have my uh, imagination run wild with no limits, so I don't didn't want to be like, ooh, you know, you're not gonna want to play this every night. That's the purpose right. of the project, just to have your <coughs> imagination running wild. I bet you just wanted to do something different though. That was still yeah. metal, because yeah. there's probably some things you would like to do but that you probably boot. It doesn't fit for Boo or something, but oh yeah, absolutely. now you can just throw it in this crazy project you have over here. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes uh, the intention for a project will start as unsolicited, and then it, I'm I'm like, actually, this sh- should totally be a boo song. Like, um, a mind short circuiting. It's the uh, it's the second to last single that we have released. Uh, that started out as uh, an unsolicited song, and then I was like, God, I can just imagine us playing this song live. Mm. I'm like, this needs to be a boo song. So by the time I finished it, I'm like. Finished it with the intentions of it being a Born of Osiris song, and then it, it did come to fruition. So you never know. Sometimes I don't even know what it's going to be or who it will be for. And You're just making it to make it. I'm just so used to recording songs and demos that never see the light of, the di- of day. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah, yeah. like Just so much of what I write and record, and that's just how it goes. I'm not angry about it. It's just the part of being an artist. You yeah. know, if Every painting you make isn't gonna be hung in a museum so how do you deal with uh like have you heard of the painter's dilemma before what is that it's like when like a painter just like keeps working on something and can't decide when it's done you know what i mean like like how do you (laughs) like when do you know something is done because i like when i'm editing a photo or something dude i could sit there and tweak just the oranges just the just oh, the orange juice. I could sit yeah. there and tweak those just a little. Mm, hate it. Okay, I like it a little more. Okay. And if you listen to it too much, yeah. then it's it sucks. Like, I I would love to be able to walk and just hear it with fresh ears, as if I had never heard it before. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I have that dilemma as well. And sometimes you you just have to walk away and is have to finish it. There also is that like, yeah, that get this puppy out. Like we need to just get this puppy out. Like, yeah. This needs to be done. Oh, absolutely. Well, then I also, as of the last two albums, I, I mix my own albums with Unsolicited as well. And that adds a new layer of oh, like, shit, this yeah. is not done. Oh, God. <laughs> like, so my Holy second shit. album, Luminous Empire, I, I mixed that one myself and uh, super proud of the mix and stuff. But I, I had those moments, too, during the mix where you're hearing in all different speakers. And I'm like, oh, my God, the kick drum's too loud. But then I listen to it and on a different sp- system, yeah. like the kick drum's too soft now. And like, it's just. We just went through all that shit, too. Hate with, it. That's the worst part. Hate it. Um, I usually like to do this with musicians just because I'm so curious. I went through actually my whole band. And I had, cause I'm like, you hang out with these people and you know them, like, but do you really know, like, how they started playing music? You know what I mean? And I, yeah. I didn't know the story for any of my band dudes. Really? No. So you've, uh, know, you've known them since I've grade, known them grade since, school. Yeah, right? since we were really young, but I didn't know, like, exactly how they started picking up the guitar. So I'm curious how you got into drum. Was the guitar first then and then drums? Cause you do both so well. So, so. Oh, thank you. So I'm definitely better at drums. I'm, uh, but I started piano actually. Okay. My mom taught me piano at a very young age. So even just before the piano, there's there's something called kinder music, and it's probably still going on today. But it's just when you're very young, when you're even you know four years old, five years old, you get in a room and they just have all sorts of instruments, whether it's like tambourines, mallets. Things you can bang on, you know, for yeah. four or five year olds, you can sit in experiment a circle. Experiment with shit. You experiment and play music, do sing alongs, and it's just a musical explosion of That's being awesome. a five year old. So I, could, I would say that was the the environment. Every kid should get that. Should be mandatory. Yeah, yeah. Instead of gym <laughs> class. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So that's the environment I kind of grew up in, and that led to actual piano lessons with piano teachers. When you were like how old? Probably seven, eight. Okay. Started the piano lessons, and then shortly, at, which I hated, by the way, but it's okay. I'm. Yeah. My mom's like, "Y'all thank me later," but yeah. Do you? I think, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Say um, it again. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, mom. <laughs> yeah, I know my parents were always really supportive. I know not everybody has that, so I'm very uh blessed and grateful to have that the entire time yeah even when it looked crazy awesome yeah i'm glad to hear that for you too so yeah then drums when i was about nine years old my uncle gary got me a pearl export drum set and i was just at the time i was getting into like grunge music that i would hear on the radio i heard nirvana smells like teen spirit and i was obsessed i was and the drums on that song were just i mean it's nothing crazy but they just, the drums hit, you know, Dave Grohl was unintentionally really like shaping me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, just starting I think that there. happened to a lot of us. Yeah. Cause yeah. I started on drums too. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, I didn't start. I think I started with like trumpet or something like, cause I had, oh. it was a, it was a gateway. They were like, you have to do one of the instruments that oh, you wow. don't want to play before trumpet you can play hard. drums. Trumpet. Oh, I hated the trumpet. Trumpet is hard. Dude. Sucked ass. Yeah. But anyway, I think maybe that's what that makes sense. I think Dave Grohl probably did that to a lot of people. Made a lot of people want to play drums. Yeah. So I would listen to stuff on the the radio and and just try to imitate it. And then I I took actual uh, drum lessons. I had a really good teacher. His name is Steve Snodgrass. And for years, I I would learn and I started very slow too. So I say to like newer drummers, don't get frustrated because. Everything was very slow process for me, and even by the time I was a more developed drummer by 18, 19, and, you know, the stuff you hear on the records I was putting out, you see me live like I was okay, but I still, in my opinion now, looking back on it, I think I was kind of not great. I was getting through it, but, you know, it's not the way that I play the songs live now where I feel that I've had enough time to really, really hone in on my skills, so, like, even the the records I was putting out at 18 years old might have taken me a, a few more years to actually confidently and accurately play them live. So I'm just saying that everything is a very slow process. Mm-hmm. I started learning Beatles songs on the drums um, and just moved, moved on to, to more advanced stuff, but very slowly. And nothing came quickly. I Double bass was very hard for me. I 
almost returned my double bass pedal when I the, I picked up an Iron Cobra. I was so excited because I heard As I Lay Dying 94 hours for, for the first time, that song, just mm-hmm. so so fast. I haven't heard that in a long time. That yeah, was one of the banger. first That was one of the first blast beats I ever heard, I think. Banger. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, and I set up the double bass pedal, and I was like, my left foot would not budge. I was like, this is so hard. And then my non-drummer friends w- would try it. And they were, I felt like they were flying on it. I was like, you don't even play drums, and everyone's fly. I was like, they had strong like, ankles or something, dude. I or don't you know. You have weak ankles. <laughs> I don't know, man. So I, <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> I was so, uh, I was so bummed out. I was pretty close to returning the double bass pedal because I was just gonna be like, maybe this isn't your thing. And wow. Yeah, but That's I just crazy. decided to keep it set up, and I was persistent. Um, and. Um, yeah, I'm honestly I'm still always striving to learn. I still want to get faster at double bass and very much like after this tour, I'm going to probably get a new double bass pedal and just try more speed exercises just because that's just what I want to do. Yeah, you know, I, and, I think that's why I think you guys are just wired different drummers like you, it's just you guys work so, so hard like Garrett too. Oh. Shout out to my drummer Garrett. Oh, yeah, Garrett he, is a he, powerhouse. He's, he's an absolute yeah. savage, and he's been that that like he's obviously constantly getting better, but he's been like that good since we were kids. Yeah, since I just since I saw him playing at he school, just and stop. I was like, dude, holy yeah, fuck, he's, he's playing necrophagist, he's a, <laughs> and he's <laughs> 17, 16. He's yeah, he's and, a freak of nature. Yeah, and he's so, really good. but you guys are just what you guys just like work. You have to work harder at your instrument than I think a lot of a lot of the other ones you know what i mean and i know that that might be that might be a too black and white of a statement but it's like it's physical it's more physical yeah you know what i mean it definitely is and that it wasn't for me (laughs) you know what i mean i was like i i quickly i set down the double bass pedal (laughs) yeah (laughs) i did return the double bass pedal it's okay well i cannot scream to save my life so yeah what to do try to give me one real quick okay i'm gonna back up from the mic though Ah! Do you want? Is there anything you want me to scream like specifically? Know. No, just do it. Just give me like a. Gorka. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was pretty bad. I'm not gonna. Lie. <laughs> good Wait. set, bro. That was a good. That was good. No, it was good. That's music. Wait, you have, you haven't heard my highs though. Oh god. Gorka. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that is a rooster. <laughs> That's good. It'll oh, do. You you you, uh, you screwed your. Uh, you gotta you gotta fix your curtain now. You rolled over your curtain. Oh no! no. Oh no! Now they can see the sh- that we're just in a shitty office building, an old Metro oh PCS. Don't, don't They're all gonna know that we're in an old. Oh no! Now the other side. Oh. <laughs> you just lost we don't even have one whole curtain. That's perfect. That's good. You just lost ten subscribers. God damn it! Due to that curtain, Cameron. God sorry. damn it! Oh, sorry, sorry, guys. Hope so, you like my screams. Why your your, your, your <laughs> screams need work, dude? But uh, you know, we'll get you there. You, st- you still have the volume. I the volume's lessons. good. I'm trying to I'm trying to pick good things out yeah, of there. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you're, the, you're, the volume's okay. Uh, <laughs> the volume was good. The volume was good. Yeah, we thanks. just need a little, you know, a little more power, and then yeah, we'll be yeah. good. No, I, uh, dude, I just started doing vocals to make my friends laugh. I I traced it back to that. Well, first of all, this is just silly, but like my and when I was seven, I did I was Froggy in the Little Rascals play. Oh, that's so not f- the movie. That's so so fitting actually with and your no, voice. That's my origin story, dude. Because I had to talk like this. You know oh, what I mean? And I'm yeah. like, oh my god, I I put that math together like recently. I was. What's going on, guys? You are gonna hate me for this, but the last 15 minutes of the Cameron Loesch pod, um, the card was filling up uh, for what we record our audio with, and we lost the audio for the last 15 minutes of the pod. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, and you know what? You know why? You know why I didn't? Why it didn't happen? I didn't have my sweet, sweet Tony. Tony, we need you. We need you here. You can't be missing the pod, brother. No, I'm just kidding. We love Tony. But if it's any, uh, if it's any testament to how badly we need Tony to run this operation, the the machine, Tone Ring Cone, our sweet, sweet Tone Ring Cone. Um, you guys give Tony some love in the comments. Uh, this is what happens when you know I have to do some shit by myself. <laughs> I fuck it up. So um, if you made it this far, thank you for watching the podcast. Thanks for supporting. Please like and subscribe. Follow Cameron on uh, Instagram and hire him to do some songs for you guys. Hire him to um, you know write some drum parts for you guys. Uh, anything you need. He made the, the theme song for this podcast. So he's a good he's a friend of the pod. We love Cam. Uh, thanks for coming on, Cam. Love you, dude. Uh, like, subscribe. 
And check out another episode. Uh, it's like right here. Check out one of these right here. Whoa. You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot.